Richard Dadd was a talented British artist who lived during the 19th century. He's known for his highly detailed and imaginative paintings that depicted mythological and fairy tale scenes. However, his life was also marked by tragedy and mental illness, including a violent act that shocked the art world. Dad was born in 1817 in Chatham, Kent, England. He showed an early talent for drawing and painting, and at the age of 20, he entered the Royal Academy of Arts in London. During his time there, he developed a unique style featuring intricate depictions of nature and imaginary creatures. However, despite his artistic success, Dad's personal life was troubled. In 1842, he was employed by a wealthy traveller, Sir Thomas Phillips, to accompany him on a trip to the Holy Lands and to make drawings and watercolours for his patron's use. It was in the latter stages of this trip that Dad displayed the first signs of erratic and aggressive behaviour. Dad returned early. His symptoms were dismissed as sunstroke. He'd become increasingly paranoid and believed he was being pursued by evil spirits. He began to hear voices and see visions and became convinced that the Egyptian god Osiris was directing him to eliminate the devil's influence. When he returned to England, his condition got worse and that's when Dad's life took a tragic turn. One evening, Dad and his father Robert took a stroll through the park surrounding Cobham Hall in Kent. When they reached a circle of elm trees, the 26-year-old painter suddenly attacked his father, punching him in the head and slashing his neck with a razor, finally stabbing him in the chest with a five-inch rigger's knife until he was dead. Dad hid the body and fled to Dover, where he boarded a boat for France. Travelling south from Paris by coach, he then attacked a fellow passenger, inflicting deep razor wounds before he was overpowered and taken into custody. When interviewed, Dad said that he had been acting under the instructions of the Egyptian sun god Osiris and that he was the son and envoy of God sent to exterminate the men most possessed with the demon. On his return to England, amid huge press interest, he was declared a criminal lunatic and committed to the hospital of St Mary of Bethlehem, better known as Bethlehem, or more pejoratively, Bedlam. Dad remained there until 1864 when he was transferred to Broadmoor and there he spent the rest of his life dying in 1886. One of his most famous works is the Fairy Fella's Masterstroke, which depicts a fantasy scene of a fairy preparing to strike a hazelnut with an axe. Dad painted it while incarcerated in the lunatic asylum of Bethlehem Royal Hospital. It was commissioned by George Henry Hayden, who was head steward of the hospital at the time. Dad had begun his career as a painter of fairy paintings well before the onset of his mental illness. After he was committed, he was encouraged to resume painting. Hayden was so impressed by Dad's artistic efforts, he asked for a fairy painting of his own. Dad worked on the painting for nine years, paying microscopic attention to detail and using a layering technique to produce beautiful results. Although it's generally regarded as his most important work, Dad himself considered the painting to be unfinished. And in order to give context to his work, Dad subsequently wrote a long poem in which each of the characters appearing in the picture is given a name and a purpose. It includes references to Old English folklore and Shakespeare. The poem was an apparent attempt to show that the painting's unique composition was not just merely a product of random wild inspiration. The painting had several owners, including collector Alfred Morrison and Siegfried Sassoon, who eventually passed it to the Tate where it now resides. Despite tragedy, Dad's artistic legacy lives on. 
His paintings continue to be admired for their intricate detail and marvellous imagery, and he's quite rightly remembered as one of the most talented and original artists of the Victorian era. His story is also a reminder of the complex relationship between creativity and mental illness, and the challenges faced by those who struggle with mental health. <laughs>